Good day, learners. Welcome to our day one, collecting and organizing data from simple experiments. What do you think will happen if I toss this coin? What can we get when we roll this die? Today, we will learn how to collect data from simple experiments and organize them in a table. What is data collection? Data collection means gathering information based on what we observe or experiment on. Example 1. Tossing a coin. When we toss a coin, we can get head or tail. Let's toss a coin five times and record the results. The results are head, tail, head, head, tail. After tossing a coin, heads appeared three times, tails appeared two times. Example number two, rolling a die. When rolling a die, the possible outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, or six. Let's roll the die six times and record the results. Three, two, four, six, two, three. After rolling a die, two appeared twice, three appeared twice, four and six appeared once each. How did we gather our data? We gathered our data by doing simple experiments like tossing a coin or rolling a die and recording the result each time in a table. How did the table help us see which number appeared most? The table helped us see which number appeared most because it organized the data clearly. We could easily count and compare how many times each number appeared. Let's try this. Toss and record. Learners will toss a coin 10 times. Record the result each time. Organize the data in a table like this. Let's try this. Roll and record. Learners roll a die six times. Record and organize results in a table. Identify which number appeared the most. Always remember, collecting and organizing data helps us understand and compare results easily. When we arrange data in a table, it becomes clear and simple to read and analyze what happened in an experiment. Welcome to our day two, presenting data in a single horizontal bar graph. Favorite fruit challenge. Who likes apple? Who likes banana? Who likes mango? Who likes grapes? According to our table, five of the pupils likes apple. Seven of the pupils likes banana. Eight of the pupils likes mango. And four of the pupils likes grapes. Which fruit is the most favorite?
Which fruit is the least favorite? We can show this information using a horizontal bar graph to make it easier to compare. What is a bar graph? A bar graph shows data using bars. Each bar shows how many or how much something has. What is a horizontal bar graph? In a horizontal bar graph, the bars go from left to right. This is an example of a horizontal bar graph. The names or categories are written on the vertical side, while the numbers are written on the horizontal side. Which bar is the longest? Which bar is the shortest? What does the longest bar tell us? A bar graph helps us see and compare information easily. A horizontal bar graph shows the data using bars go from left to right. Let's try this. Let's draw it. From the given data, make your own horizontal bar graph. Always remember, a bar graph helps us show and compare data. In a horizontal bar graph, the bars go from left to right. The longer the bar, the greater the number it represents. Always give your graph a title and label the bars correctly. Welcome to our day three, presenting data in a single vertical bar graph. Favorite toy, Paul. Who likes toy cars? Who likes dolls? Who likes balls? Who likes robots? In this given data, six of the pupils likes car. Eight of the pupils likes doll. Five of the pupils likes ball and three of the pupils likes robot. Which toy is the most favorite? Which toy is the least favorite? We can show these results more clearly by using a vertical bar graph. What is a vertical bar graph? In a vertical bar graph, the bars go up and down. The names or categories are written at the bottom. The numbers or values are written on the side. This is an example of a vertical bar graph. Which bar is the tallest? Which bar is the shortest?
What does the tallest bar tell us? A vertical bar graph shows data using bars that go up and down. It helps us compare and see which items have more or fewer counts. Let's try this. Use the data and create your own vertical bar graph. Always remember, a bar graph shows and compares data easily. In a vertical bar graph, the bars go up and down. The taller the bar, the greater the number it represents. Welcome to our day four, reading and interpreting data in bar graphs. What's your favorite hobby? Who likes drawing? Who likes playing sports? Who likes listening to music? Who likes reading? In this given data, six of the pupils likes to draw. Eight of the pupils likes sports. Five of the pupils likes music. And four of the pupils likes reading. We can show these numbers using bar graphs. Let's see how a horizontal bar graph and a vertical bar graph can help us understand this data easily. What is a bar graph? A bar graph uses bars to show and compare information or data. It helps us see which has the most or least easily. Types of bar graphs Horizontal bar graphs Bars go sideways Vertical bar graphs Bars go up and down. Horizontal bar graph. Bars go sideways. Vertical bar graph. Bars go up and down. Let's read and interpret data presented in horizontal bar graphs. Favorite hobby of grade 3 learners. Which hobby has the most pupils? Which has the list? How many pupils like drawing? How many more pupils like sports than reading? Let's read and interpret data presented in vertical bar graphs. Favorite flowers of grade 3 pupils. Which flower is liked by the most pupils? Which flower is liked the least? How many pupils like daffodil? A bar graph shows data using bars. We can read and interpret data by looking at the length or height of the bars. 
In a horizontal bar graph, bars go sideways. In a vertical bar graph, bars go up and down. Let's try this. Graph reading time. Study the bar graph below and answer the questions. Thank you for watching. See you next Mathematics lesson. Goodbye.